Hello Pilots and welcome back to another X-Wing flight video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil and today I am joined by... Hey guys, it's Amy. It's great to be back. Hi Amy, welcome back to the channel. Um, I've kind of thrown you in the deep end a little bit here. There's no Empire or First Order. So cool. I apologise cool. about that. <laughs> But hopefully, there should still be some aggression and destruction on the table. Um, so we do actually have two rebel lists. Now, one thing I will quickly point out is that the overlays are the wrong way round. So I am actually running triple K-wings, and you'll see the K-wings on the right-hand side of the screen. And Quinn is running triple arcs, and you'll see them going down in a moment on the left-hand side of the screen. So. Apologies, got the overlay the wrong way around, but I'm pretty sure that we should be okay. Um, on the subject of the list, um, Amy, did you want to run through Quinn's list for us? Yep, so Quinn is running a triple arc. So we've got Shara Bay um, running Elusive, Perceptive Co-Pilot, Veteran Tail Gunner and R3 Astromech. Uh, Ibtisam with squad leader, tactical officer, and veteran tail gunner, and Garvin Dries, um, elusive, perceptive co-pilot, and again, veteran tail gunner. You can't run arcs really without that gunner on there. No, it, it's almost a staple of what you should be putting onto an arc. And I quite like the perceptor co-pilot on them as well. It's just, it's a nice little touch. Um, and plus, I'm not going to lie, the arcs just look so cool. They, they are such cool ships, and I absolutely love them. Um, but, as I said, I am running triple K-Wings. Now, I know, if I remember rightly, you're not a big fan of the K-Wings, are you? No, for two reasons. One, because I have never, ever managed to destroy one. And two, it kind of reminds me of Looney Tunes. You know when Roadrunner's going after the Coyote? Yeah. And like an anvil falls on his head and it goes flat. That's kind <laughs> of what it reminds me of. Those oh, two reasons. <laughs> absolutely fair enough. Me personally, I love the K-Wing. It's one of my favourite ships. I think when I first started playing the game, it's one of those ships that I saw and just went, I need to own that ship. It was that and the Tide Punisher. Oh, the um, Punisher is cool. Yeah, I love the Punisher. And um, I do actually have three of these in real life as well. And in fact, the very first game on the channel was myself versus Quinn with me running the Triple K Wings. So this is almost like a bit of a revenge match for Quinn. Um, but what we have on my side is we have Miranda Donny with Barrage Rockets, Han Solo Gunner, Jin Erso and Advanced Slam. And we have two Warden Squadron pilots running the exact same, so Barrage Rockets, Veteran Turret Gunner, Perceptive Co-Pilot, and the Advanced Slam. And I am a big fan of Barrage Rockets and Perceptive Co-Pilot on these K-Wings, especially if you can somehow manage to get Veteran Turret Gunner to, like, activate, and then you got two shots. It just, it can be absolutely hilarious. Oh, yes. But I, I love the K-Wings. I can, I can understand why people aren't a big fan. Uh, but for me, I just think they're brilliant models. It's a tough one as to which I prefer more, the Arcs or the K-Wings. Um, I think they both look really cool. The Arcs obviously got that slightly sleeker aspect to it. Yeah, I think for me, definitely the Arcs as well. Um... It's going to be quite interesting to see because because it's been so long since I've seen the K wings be fielded. I completely forgot that the K wings and the Arc actually have the same amount of hulls, same amount of shields, and I don't think I've ever seen two lists running so many veteran turret gunners. <laughs> this is going to yeah. be fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I think for me, it's you, you staple the one. I mean, I was looking at various different triple K wing lists. Um, because myself and Quinn were talking about triple arcs versus triple K-wings. And I was looking at one of the other pilots, which is um, Asigi. Um, but the problem is, although he's really cool um, with his ability, one, a friendly ship at range zero to two defends or performs an attack, it may spend your focus token as if the ship has them. Although that's really cool, it makes it really expensive because you want to stick 
um, Perceptor Copilot on there. You want to do all the cool stuff, and it just makes it really expensive. Um, I know Miranda's abilities, it's one of those ones where it can be really good or it can be a bit ropey, but generally, I always stick with Miranda. She is a very popular pilot, especially on the K-Wings. I think one of the issues that people have with the K-Wing is that there's not enough you can do with them. It's almost like you need something extra, like a configuration card or like a new pilot to go with them. Because although they're, they're really cool, they get a bit lost. Mm. But obviously the difference is we've got the arcs up the other side and they're just super cool and super fun. Um, I think it's a shame that there's no generic pilot for the arcs for the Rebels though. They're all named pilots. Yeah. Um, I have to admit, Shara Bay is the one that I've kind of seen the most of in lists. Ibtisam, isn't that also a B-Wing pilot? Uh, Ibtisam, I will double check that. I believe yes. But um, I'd be really proud of myself if I have. Like, I've remembered some uh, piece of Rebel oh, trivia. He's, he's not a B-Wing pilot anymore. He used to be a B-Wing pilot back in first <laughs> edition. So, yeah, he's not a B-Wing pilot now, but was. Um, Garvin is an X-Wing pilot as well. Um, and the other pilot you get for the... Arc is actually Nora Wexley, who also features in a Y Wing and is pretty good in a Y Wing actually. I mean, back in first edition, I used to run Nora Wexley alongside Ray and the Falcon, and that was just so much fun. Could yeah. be very brutal. Uh, but that is the old school. That's first edition. We don't really talk about that anymore. It's now, no. now. <laughs> so the dark it's, old days. Yeah, all well, the good old days. I, I was as I always go by. <laughs> Depends on what point. If it got to the harpoon missiles point and the um, like the Miranda Nim meta, then it oh. kind of started to tail off a little bit there. Although it was like, don't get me wrong, I loved it, but Miranda Nim got a bit boring. It, yeah, but it was really fun to actually be able to field three defenders in the list, and I can't do that anymore. It makes me sad. Yeah, true. Triple defenders was really cool, but it was also broken. It was so broken. Um, so, it, I mean, I was always a bit like, oh, that's, really, that's a shame. Double defenders are probably not going to be that good. I've flown double defenders. They could be really powerful, so... A third one in there is just too much. But I mean, there's other cool things you can fly. Triple lambdas, as you know. Triple kings, yeah. triple arcs. <laughs> um, I believe you can fit triple upsilons as well. Yeah, me and James were playing around with a couple of lists um, a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, you can fit three upsilons in a list. Um, one of my favourite lists as well is triple silencer. Um, yeah. Triple Silencer is good. Yeah, Triple Silencer is a lot of fun. Um, I don't think you can do like twin falcons or a twin or triple falcons. I oh, know you can do twin falcons, but you can't do triple falcons. Uh, you can. In, I think you can do it in one or two factions but not all three i'd have to quickly right. have a look at the points on them because all of the different falcons are various points so let me have a quick look so of course uh, you can't do triple falcons on rebels because the cheapest falcon is 67 points <laughs> so just like the defender there um let me have a quick look i think I think you can do it on scum. Yeah, that would make sense. Oh yeah, you can easily do it on scum. In fact, you could do all named as well because they are super cheap. Han Solo, in, Han Solo on scum is 48 points. So you could actually have Han, Lando and L337 in there. In fact, 
you could, with no upgrades, I think do four and have every single pilot. Let's have a quick look. It'll probably be terrible. It'll be scary, but... It'll be fun. It'll be hilarious. Yeah, if you wanted to, you could do all four pilots, so the three named pilots of the generic, in the scum faction and still have 28 points to play with. So that's silly. I like it. Um, and, and let's just have a quick look for resistance and then we'll get back to having a look and see what's actually happening on the board. Uh, resistance you could do you could do three and actually have rain there as well. Wouldn't be a mini upgrade though, because you're looking at between 58 and 68 points. So if you want to fly lots of Falcons, Scum is the place to be. Yeah. Ooh, that's, going back to the game, that's an aggressive move from Ipsam there. I'm wondering if he realised that he was going to end up facing down those K-Wings there. It's very brave. And if you'll notice, the K-Wings, in fact, have got evade tokens there. Now, that will be because of Jin Erso on the on Miranda. So Jin actually allows them to change one of their focuses that they gain into a evade, which is, I think, probably going to be quite handy here at the moment because uh, that's, although they've got a good shot, they are going to get shot at first. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see if Garvin and Shara get within range to try and capitalize and shoot down one of these K-Wings. Ooh, and I think Miranda might also be in a position to get shot. Now, Miranda does have Han Solo Gunner as well, so that means she will be able to get a bonus shot there at initiative seven. <laughs> so, yeah, Han Solo is ridiculous. He's a really good color card. He is 12 points, so fairly expensive, but could pay dividends here because it could be a case of being able to strip some tokens um, from some of those ships and then get a second shot potentially with barrage rockets which i absolutely love such a great upgrade <laughs> but it looks like we are going to have a big joust between these ships yeah, it's uh, quite nice to see the jousting. It's not very often you see, like, full lists up against each other like that. Yeah. Ooh, so we are going to get the Han Solo bonus attack trigger going. Now, I do have initiative, so regardless, I would still be shooting first um, against Quinn anyway. But because this is initiative seven, it's then not at the initiative four step. So if I was to take something out later at initiative seven, ooh, hit crit, that's not too bad. No, that's all right. It would mean that Quinn would not get a shot back. So that looks like one damage going through on Ibtisam there. So that's one shield down, good start. And still have the focus, so flipping one of the charges there on barrage rockets, so three dice coming in. Uh -oh. What I like with barrage rockets is as well, is I can keep my K-Wings arcs left to right and still have the barrage rockets out the front. Yeah, you're essentially giving yourself a 360 arc. 
270, but close. Oh, two more crits going through to Ibsam there. Oh, and that's the last two shields down there. Ouch. This this could end up quite painful for Ibsam. It already has. <laughs> yeah, so Garvin's just out of range. See if Shara has a shot. Yep, so range three, either on yellow or on Miranda. So checking those tokens. So regardless, it'll be two of eight dice for me there. For some reason I managed to delete my dice. I think I was trying to delete that random of eight dice that was on the table. <laughs> so hit crit, spending a focus, two hits and a crit, not a bad shot at all. Gonna guarantee <gasps> some damage through. Ooh, so an evade and a blank. Spending the evade. So just one shield on yellow there. You know what, I'm kind of okay with that. Yeah, it's not too bad. That's quite good. And then we have a range two obstructed or range... Th so range two or range three obstructed on yellow or red and range three on green. So it looks like we're going straight back into yellow again. Oh, that's another great hit. Why can't my dice naturally do that? <laughs> so two evades there. So that is just one shield off of yellow. That was, yeah, that's some hot dice there. Now let's see how hot these dice remain. So left to right, no shots, but we have the barrage rockets. I'm already hiding behind a cushion because I just don't want to see the damage coming from these barrage rockets. <sighs> I just, I'll tell you what, I love, there's such a great little upgrade, and the fact that you can do it off of a focus as well. So, Barrage Rockets, attack, focus, spend one charge. If the defender is in your bullseye, you may spend one or more charges to reroll that many attack dice. And it's range three, uh, sorry, three attack dice, range two to three, spend in that focus, um, because it's miss out he doesn't get any range bonuses all oh, that's hit hit crit ouch oh that's painful that is painful and it i think it might have classed as unobstructed there which is interesting so hit hit crit and the crit is disabled power regulator so okay. before you engage, gain one ion token. So fortunately for Instagram there, he's already engaged, so we won't be gaining an ion token this round. Unfortunately for Ibtizam, Red has not shot yet. But that should be obstructed by the look of it, so... Yes, there we go. It is obstructed. So Quinn is pulling up two dice here. So another barrage rockets. No range bonus though, because it does have the missile icon. But you can't really complain about that. Two more hits and a crit. That wow, brutal dice. Yeah. It does get to flip one for the gas cloud. Oh, okay. I think we might have forgotten the gas cloud there. So, I'll see. Either we've missed that it's a gas cloud or he's had the range three uh, by accident. But that's a bit of a miss there. So, I mean, these things happen. That was a direct hit there as well. So, that's a very, very painful first round of shooting there. Yeah, that's uh, 
Ouch. Is this one of the reasons you don't like K-Wings? Yes. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing is, once you start chipping away at them, I mean, I was quite fortunate with, like, the range and the evade token there, but once you start really chipping away at them, they, go, they can go down quite quickly. They've only got one evade naturally. So I think the difficulty here is that I'm, in a, I'm now in quite a strong position, but it's a case of how fast is Quinn going to go with his arcs? Is he going to try and get right up in my face to essentially block those barrage rockets and try and get some high damage focus fire in, or it's going to be tough. Yeah. And then obviously I can get in and try and get the block, luckily having that first movement there. Ooh, but there's a bump there. Medium base ships, they don't quite fly exactly like a small base ship. Does take a little bit of getting used to. Yeah, I have to admit, even well, ever since they were introduced, I'm still really getting to grips with learning how to fly them. I mean, all in all, there's not a huge amount, especially in the Empire. There's two and uh, three in the Empire with the Thai Heavy, and there's one in the First Order, which are your main factions. I think the faction with the most medium-based ships, I think you're probably looking at scum. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I mean, just having a look, I think four medium-based ships for scum. Yeah. So. Ooh. Ooh. That is quite nice positioning there for Quinn. He's uh, He's got a good... Good set of shots that could be coming in there. This could be quite a bit of pain, but we're going to see a hard solo trigger first from um, Miranda there into Garvin. Two more hits. Not, Not being lie, I'm happy with that. And that's one going through. I'll check in. So, range two. So, yep, that's another barrage rocket coming through. <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy efficient. Oh, that's not a great barrage rocket. And also, there's no bullseye there, so can't spend a charge to change one. Um, but Quinn can spend a focus to evade that. So. Not too bad there for Garvin, just one damage off two shots. But Garvin and Shara do get the opportunity to shoot back and see what they can do. Will they go for yellow this right in front of them tokened up at range one, or will they skip past to go for the untokened red? Nope. It's yellow. Just trying to get those range one shots in. Well, I mean, they have four dice at range one because they are... Oh, that's not good. Where were the dice from earlier? <laughs> I don't know. This, this, this is what happens. Though. The more dice you roll, the worse it's going to get. Um, but that... Spending the evade. May as well spend it while you got it. So, no damage there. Quinn electing to save that focus for defence. Oh wow! I probably I would I would I'd trash those dice, put them in the recycle bin. Definitely don't want those again. Yeah, get a new set. <laughs> that is. Just wait and see if Quinn decides to spend the focus to try and push some damage through. Oh no, got the target lock there. Well, that might help a bit. Oh, it really does. Now you spend the focus, get four damage. Okay. Yep, that's not bad. 
Yeah, that's four oh, damage oh, going through. There we go. Suddenly, it's starting to hurt my my lovely K wings a little bit there. Now the points are very close um, in the actual list. Um, my points are 195 for the list, and Quinn's are, is 196. So it's very close between them. But now it is time for some return fire from the K-Wings. Well, no barrage rockets because too close, but range one shot most likely going into Shara, as I can concentrate with both yellow and red there. And also no tokens, which is always a plus. Oh, yeah. So spend the focus for two there. And get two. Will we see an elusive trigger? Yes, we do. And not quite as helpful as Quinn would like. Elusive's an interesting upgrade. I don't tend to use it very often. No, neither do I. Um... This is like other other talent upgrades I'd prefer to have, although I don't know, on a what a what of a chip. Not exactly all. Okay, so that's hit crit going through there, so That is a shield and a crit. And the crit is a fuel leak. <laughs> oh, that's got, that is the worst one to get right there. Actually, a the whole breach is probably worse, but a fuel leak is still, still not good. Oh. Mm. No, that's in like the top three of lists, well, of lists of um, crits not to get. Mm. Especially early on. I mean, Hull Breach would be the absolute worst on a oh, yeah. fairly hull heavy ship, but oh, that's not good. And you know what? It's really interesting position now because it's very tight in there. And the K Wings. Although they can slam, they can't exactly turn around very quickly. I know they have the the turret arc, which is going to help them, but they don't have a very quick turnaround. So there's not really much they can do there. I mean, the arcs have access to a K turn, so it's a lot easier for them. So. It'll be interesting to see where everyone ends up. It'll be interesting. You know, earlier on you said we were discussing the Falcons yeah. and you can fit four into a list. Well, I checked and you can fit four landers into a list. <laughs> so how long until we ex how long until we see that on the board then? Because that could be quite um, funny. Shall we do it? <laughs> Instead of having our rematch of the, what was it, the arcs against the triple lambda, shall we do quadruple? <laughs> quadruple lambdas. What would I fly? I don't quadruple think... falcons. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if quadruple falcons would be... I would rate a falcon over a lambda. So, but we'll just... I'll have a look and see what I can, see what I can put together, but that could be quite funny. It could be. I mean, granted, you can't fit a load of upgrades on there, but oh, yeah, absolutely it would not. still be great to see. <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, we're already straight back into the shooting here with this one because pretty much everything bar Miranda bumps. So Han Solo trigger to get a shot out the back with Miranda. So that looks dissipating do going into Garvin or Shara. 
no tokens. It all comes down to the range. I think Garvin is just in range one, but I think the right option should be to double down on that go for go for Garvin. I think the reasoning behind that is, as you can see, um, yellow won't have an arc backwards, but red will have an arc over there. Yeah. So able to get two shots in on Garvin and spending a shield to get an additional dice there with Miranda's ability, getting two hits going through. So it's not, not terrible. No, it's still quite good. So for those of you who aren't as familiar with Miranda Donny, uh, while you perform an attack, you may either spend one shield to roll one additional attack die, or if you are not shield, shielded, you may roll one fewer attack die to recover one shield. So a bit of an interesting one there. Oh, and that is just the one hit, and Miranda evades it. And I believe that was from Shara. And due to the interesting way that the ships have actually lined up, that is a range two from Garvin. Not bad though, two hits. So definitely, yeah. definitely going to be a shield gone there. Ooh. There is both of Miranda's shields gone now. So starting to get a fair amount of damage back in. And yeah, no. Oh. No way. Going backwards? I uh, left to right, but that that clipped Shara there. That is such a that must have only just clipped that. Only one hit though. So this is still. one of many reasons why I love TTS. I mean, nothing will beat like actually playing in real person, but it's just those arcs that you cannot judge by yeah. eye, and it just says, yeah, you've clipped it. Oh, okay. Absolutely. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to actually get some games in at the store, and it has been amazing. Like, the atmosphere there, actually doing everything has been great. I mean, again, we've said it so many times, TTS has been an absolute lifeline for us. Um, and the accuracy on TTS is what really is quite nice. Um, and that is another damage going through on Garvin there. You just can't quite mirror that accuracy in real life. Nice. But you can quickly change your angle that you're looking at things at in real life, which is so much easier without having to try and work it out with the mouse and keyboard. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, there's things from both games that I could probably merge, like say for example, um, yeah, as you've just said, with the mouse and keyboard, trying to look at your angles, it's quite easily just to take a couple of steps to the left or the right. Yeah. Whereas another thing on TTS that I really, really like is actually seeing the bumper stickers. Yes, to remind um, you and to let you know for definitely bumped, it's quite nice. Yeah, I think I might have, have a look at getting hold of some somewhere. I'm sure uh, somebody does them somewhere. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can get acrylic bump tokens. Um, but whilst we are in the middle of sorting out dials here, I think it's a good point to remind everyone that if you do like what you are seeing here and you want to support the channel, we do have a Patreon. And the link for that is in the description below. Uh, the levels start from £2, and on the subject of Patreon, I do want to say a big shout out to Duncan, who is our first Patreon supporter, so thank you very much, Duncan, for showing your faith with us. We very much appreciate it, and if you want to become one of our patrons, then click the link in the description below and check it out and show us your love. Right, and I think we might nearly be ready on dials there. Yeah. It's, you never know what to do when you're so close to each other. 
I mean, with a K ring, it's to somehow slowly but surely turn around. The only hard turn the K ring has is the too hard. So it has no reds, but it doesn't have a K turn. So it really relies on that mobile arc. And if you want to get around, and I say this in inverted commas, quickly, you kind of have to slam. But it means that there will be no shooting. So debating whether to slam or rotate there with yellow. And again, rotating, really tricky call to make because, oh, I have races there. You rotate, they might just say, nope, I'm going somewhere else. And then suddenly you're like, oh, well, that was a wasted action. Yeah. Uh, just a cheeky little one forward there from red, knowing that wherever he went, it was going to be a nightmare. So focus and evade. Miranda getting really close to that board edge. Taking a focus. I mean, God of the uh, the Dark Ages of first edition where you could move, then do an advanced slam, but bomb at the same time, and then just be like, right, move, bomb, advanced slam, gone. Here you go, have that. Oh. See, that's exactly what I was talking about with the rotate of the arc now. I'm not sure if yellow is going to have Garvin in arc, but previously, I mean, if we have a look at the arcs there, it might catch it. Oh, it looks like it might actually, but it's going to be... A close one. Yeah. But we've got a range three from Miranda at either Shara or Garvin. Both have focuses, so neither are really, like, unappealing. I'm looking at it now, I'd probably go for Garvin, just purely because other things will get to attack it. But I've gone for Shara because I ignore everything that I say. It's always the way, watching things back and you just think, no, I shouldn't have done that, I should have done this. Yeah. It's the right, complete waste of a shot there. So that's karma. That's why, oh, like past Phil should listen to future Phil. Future Phil knows things. Ish. But yeah, it's, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see just a double downing of fire from Shara and Garvin into red. Just absolutely just try to smash them down. Yeah, I mean, catch up a little bit more points-wise as well. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, these, these are all fairly expensive ships. I mean, mine are all 65 points apiece. So, like that's a big chunk of the list there. Spending an evade to only take one shield. I think it's one of those things. If you're only, if you're only rolling one evade dice and you have an evade token, you may as well spend it if you can, because, well, next time you're rolling evade and you wish you'd taken it. Yeah. So, Shara going to spend that target lock. Also adding an additional die there. So, so while you defend or perform a primary attack, you may spend one lock you have on an enemy ship to add one focus result to your dice results. So I think that kind of worked out pretty good there, guaranteeing three hits. So that is red with no shields. Uh, just catching Garvin there at range two. So that's where it became tricky, whether it be range two or three, 
out the side, it would have definitely been range two. Out the back, it was only just range two, so. Ooh, hit crit. That's a good roll. That is a very good roll. Garvin is definitely spending that focus. Yeah. And then using his ability to pass that focus on to Shara there. And what is Garvin's crit? Okay. It's a loose stabilizer. Could be worse. Could be worse. Not great, but could be worse. And uh, then we have a range one from Red, who may or may not still have a focus. I can't quite see from this angle. Uh, yep, had a focus. Definitely doesn't now. That's three more hits into Garvin. And spending his other focus. So that's where Perceptive Copilot comes in real handy. So this is getting quite painful now there for Garvin and Chara, to be honest. Yeah. And Miranda at the Red Squadron Pirate, a pirate? Pilot? Yar. <laughs> Yar. This is from us talking about Scum earlier. <laughs> the <laughs> Space Pirates. Yeah, they're still practically unscratched. Yeah, I mean, they've lost their shields, but I mean, Miranda could potentially gain those shields back if she wanted. Um, I think the thing that the arcs have now is that they have the maneuverability advantage. So they've, they've got that K turn. They do have the three hard. Yes, it's red. I mean, the, between the two ships, the similarities in their dial is like pretty crazy actually so um there's no reds on the cables as we've already mentioned yeah the four maneuvers that the arcs get over the cables are all red so that is the left or right three hard the four forward and the four k turn are red it does have the addition of the two banks that are blue on the arc so they, maneuverability-wise, have an advantage. I think what brings the arcs down a little bit is the lack of a generic pilot. I think that they could do with a generic. Yeah, I mean, this is me not knowing very much about rebels and resistance, as you know, as we. We all know I'm a, a huge Empire player, but have has the Ark actually come out as a single ship expansion yet in version two, or is it still to come? Uh, for the Republic, it has. Right. Um, but what what I tend to find is with uh, just double checking. Yeah, it's just for the Republic. What I do tend to find is that when a reprint of a ship comes out, they don't tend to add new pilots in there. Hmm. It, it, it tends to be anything you get in that pack is the same pilots and upgrades that you would have had access to previously. So it's almost to try and stop them forcing you to have to buy, to have to buy it. The only time that that differs is the squadron packs. So the squadron packs have obviously added new pilots and new upgrade cards in there that you don't get access to anywhere else. But I do think the squadron packs are really good. They are at a pretty good premium. If you look at it, it's the same price. Like you get three ships in there and then normally um, the same price as two and a half expansion packs. So you, you do get a bit of a reduction in the cost. So I do feel that if and when they re-release the arc for Rebels, they might not introduce new pilots. It could be in a future card pack that they do it. 
But again, at the moment, we don't know. We're still waiting to hear hear confirmation of the Fury of the First Order. We're still waiting to hear confirmation of the rumours of the Resistance Y-Wing. And will or will that not be a double pack, as some of the rumours I've seen? So there's, there's a lot that we're still waiting for. Yeah. And I'm still waiting for the Tide Rito to come out. Yes, and we haven't even seen that rumoured yet. Because the Fury of the First Order is the Tide Whisper, which looks amazing. Um, yep. Might have to double use that as uh, an interceptor occasionally in Empire. Um, and the Tide Bomber, the Tide FO Bomber, which just looks so cool. And I can't oh, wait yeah. for that. Um, I mean, the Tide Dorito will look really cool as well. And I mean, we're still waiting for the Razor Crest, um, other ships that we've spotted. There's a lot of Republic ships, a lot of Separatist ships still waiting for. Cad Bane ship from Bad Batch. Um, also, Fennec Shan's ship from Bad Batch as well. So, potentially yeah. more there. I mean, the Bad Batch's ship the Omicron Havoc class. So a lot a lot of things that we're still waiting for there. Um, back to the game. One thing we're not waiting for. Sorry, Garvin. Um, ouch. Garvin is no more, unfortunately. So it is now Shara Bay versus the world. Now can you understand why I don't like the K-Wings? <laughs> They're just too destructive. Okay, I've had a thought then. Triple K-Wings versus the Landers. Do you reckon that's worth it? Do you reckon you could get some revenge there? I'm happy to give it a go. Be worth it. I mean, okay, yeah, right. okay. Yeah, let, let's try that at some point. Anyway, so I was saying it's obviously Shara Bay versus the world now, and I think if anyone could do it, the mother of Poe Dameron should hopefully be able to do this, right? Yeah, she should be able to. I mean, she's well known uh, in the... I'm not sure if it's canon or... Led, yeah, in canon, she's known for being an A-wing pilot. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I reckon, I reckon she could do it. I mean, we also, you know, what well, her son Poe did in Force Awakens. Was it how many TIE fighters did um, he take out on his on his own? <laughs> it was in the double um, digits, I know that. I swear, every time I... I always count it every time. I don't know why. I just have that need to count it. And I believe it's either 11 or 15. It's a bit of a gap there. A little bit of a gap, but it's been a while since I watched Force Awakens. If anyone does know how many Thai FOs Poe Dameron took out um, in the Force Awakens in that one run, pop it down below in the comments. I will double check it, and if you do get it right, definitely give you a shout out. There's a part of me wondering if I say 15 is whether I count the Stormtroopers as well. Ooh. So I only want to know TIE Fighters. How many TIE Fighters does he take out in that one looping run where everyone's just staring at him, just going, who on earth is that guy? Why is he so good? And how does he not have the Force? I only watched this film yesterday and I kind of, and I want to watch it again now just to count. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I really enjoy Force Awakens. Um, it's a really good movie. I mean, to be honest, let's not get sidetracked by the movies right now because that's a debate for another day. Right now, we have three angry K-Wings trying to hunt down an arc. And, uh... Unfortunately, that arc seems to be putting herself into a little bit of a corner there. as if it's going, nope, I'm out, fly off the board. <laughs> There's no quitting in this game. Day. 
<laughs> no quitting in this game. You've got to stick it out till the end. I mean, I've seen Stranger Things happen. Like, sometimes you get that one ship that's on its last legs and it just manages to just absolutely destroy. So it's not out of the realms of possibility here. I mean, in fairness, it's not an easy task either, but... No, I mean, I think I've managed to do it once, but maybe not to this extent. With yeah. one against three. Yeah. I mean, you are looking at 15 hull points to get through. Admittedly, there's only, between all of them, three of eight dice, so... It's doable. Yeah. It is... So a bit of a net forming there from the K-Wings. Looks like Red's arcs are left and right. Miranda's are still front and back. I can't really see yellows, but I think that might still be front and back from earlier when yellow rotated the arc. Yeah, I think it is. So I'm gonna check. I don't think Miranda's got a shot. No, no shot from Miranda. So I'm pretty sure that that is a shot-free round here. Oh, that was close. That is not far off at all. Oh, but that's a bit closer. I am terrible with judging this at the moment. <laughs> I mean, range three through a gas cloud. Two dice versus three with a focus and essentially old school auto thrusters. Yeah, I mean, there's guaranteed to evade that. And that's when he gets the best evade dice of the game as well. Yeah, nothing there from yellow. Now, here's something interesting, and it, it's a bit of a, a little bit of a conundrum. You've got three versus one. And with the way the arcs are going on those ships, you can get quite a good net going there. With red here, how far, obviously I'd say you just go forward, keeping that arc out to the left and right. How far forward do you go? Do you do the one? and then potentially give a gas cloud bonus, or do you do the two and try and go absolutely clear, but then be concerned with the edge of the board here? Um, I'd do the one forward and the gas cloud bonus, just to be on the safe side. So try and make sure that you don't accidentally fly off at the end. Mm. Fair enough. I mean, Did if I, I was Shara Bay, I'd be thinking, yeah, please, do do the two forward in oh, yeah, for the flying off. But if I was in your position with the K-Wings, I'd say, yeah, just do one forward and use the bonus from the gas yeah. cloud. Don't get too cocky. Um, so Liz, I did do the one forward in the end. I, I was just, I can, I can vaguely remember when I was doing this, just thinking about it, going, oh, it's, it's tricky, what, what should I do? Because obviously trying to keep a sort of a net on just one ship can can be interesting, but I think I've got it there. Mm. So I think looking at it, there, there, yeah, I, I think I think we've got her. I should imagine she's uh, a little bit nervous right now. <laughs> yeah. So, Han Solo, trigger, nothing, barrage rockets, double checking if bullseye is on, it, bullseye is on, 
So that means I potentially got two free rerolls there with the charges left. Uh, definitely going to spend one of those charges for that. Get a cheeky crit. And spend the focus. So two hits and a focus there. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Considering we've got the fuel leak active, that is going to trigger. So spending that focus to get Adivade. So... Uh, the next crit is a wounded pilot and then another damage there for the fuel leak. Mm. Unfortunately, I don't think Shara can pull this off now. No, she's uh, pretty much in a box. If she can take out yellow, though, that would be pretty good going. Although, it looks like Yellow might have an evade token there, so it would be tricky, but... So yeah. I, say, I, I say Yellow, I meant Red, but Red's got six, so can't even take Red out. Unless I managed to get through three crits and they're all direct hits, but... That's unfortunate. Yeah. Take it though, it must be just double focus in there. So one damage on red. Or oh, Miranda even, sorry. That's why there was no take no tokens. Range one from yellow, so no barrage rockets. Oh, just the crit. Can Shara... Shara can evade it. Oof, she's very lucky. Yeah. Now it's coming down to red. Range two. No tokens for Shara now. Oh. And evaded. Nice. Shara good. lives another turn. That is impressive. Especially after that brutal attack from Miranda there, just getting the trigger of the fuel leak. Probably a good thing I didn't like bomb the water squadron forward as fast as I potentially could have. So, 4k with Shara? Try and get her behind the K-Wings? I think it might be wise. <laughs> I mean, that, that could actually be quite handy, because it... Depending on how much I try and turn in with the K-Wings, I mean... Well, we could always... It looks like there's probably going to be no shot for yellow, depending on what Shara does. Red would still have a shot by the look of it, because that's a really good angle. Well, it's just turning into an absolute bump fest there. It is. Oh, and in fact, Miranda didn't bump, so was able to actually get an action. There's the 4K turn. Had to be done. Yeah. So it's still going to take two shots, but it's going to benefit from the gas cloud um, from the Miranda shots. So range two through the gas cloud, so that's not bad at all there. Oh, 
just the one, so that's going to be absolutely fine, as long as Quinn doesn't get eyeballs. There we go, gas cloud, absolutely fine. That's the salty point where you get the double eyeballs and you're just like, why? <laughs> I've actually had that with like five dice. All five of them were focuses that didn't have a focus. So it was like, great, thank you very much. It happens. So range one into red from Shara. How much revenge can you enact? Oh, that's not a bad roll at all. That's that definitely going to be that's going to be two crits going through. Even better if they're both direct hits. It's yeah, unlikely, but <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it is unlikely. I think you'd probably be better off fuelly into direct hit. But we do have. Waiting for it to pop up on the screen. What well, one of them was a direct hit. Yes. So you called it. We have. Oh, it's not bringing up the second one. I think it might have been a wounded pilot by the look of it. It's hard to tell at this resolution. But range one shot back. I think the important thing is that it's not a weapons failure. That unfortunately is going to be a dead Shara Bay. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's gone. And that is... Okay, oh, no, elusive trigger. No, that's even worse. Um, but that is Shara Bay down. She survived a lot longer than I think you'll agree was expected there. And also put in a, a lot more damage as well. Sneaked a few more points in. But all in all, I think that was quite an interesting. I'll tell you what, to play it, it was really fun. Like seeing like three or well, two triple medium base ship lists was just interesting. You don't see that very often. No. So, do you think that you've spotted anything there from those K rings that makes you think that you could take them out, or do they still sort of bring a sense of dread to you? No, they still bring a bit of dread to me. <laughs> Well, you you might be able to tell me at some point, but the, the dark side is strong with me. Well, we'll see. Maybe we'll actually try and get those triple K rings out for you and see if you can actually annihilate them with my triple lambdas. Yeah, break the hoodoo there. Um, but all in all, I think that was a great game, Quinn. It was really good fun to play you there with your triple arcs, um, Amy. Thank you very much for joining me in commentating to that and obviously rambling away on many a tangent. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me again. It's it, it, As always, it's been a pleasure to be back and it was another good game to watch. Excellent. Well, hopefully we'll get you back on the channel soon, flying and commentating again. Oh, um, yes. But in the meantime, guys, as I said, if you do want to support us on Patreon, the link is in the description below please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, we will see you next time.